Hey everyone, my name is Shiv Glani. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Osmosis. And today I have very exciting news to share with you. As you may have seen on a recent Raised Line podcast episode, I've made the decision after years of building Osmosis to go back to medical school at Johns Hopkins. So I'm here in Baltimore. I've already restarted uh, with an elective and I have my ob clerkship over the summer. And um, I wanted to kind of take a, take a few minutes to walk you through some of the Osmosis story, because some of you may not be as familiar with it. Uh, what we accomplished, um, how it's been like since we joined Elsevier, and then why I'm going back to medical school, because I think many of you may have the same kind of questions about, do you want to do some entrepreneurship? Do you want to go to get an MBA? Do you want to do a public health degree? Whatever it may be uh, outside of clinical medicine. And I know this because I speak to at least a dozen students every month, giving them advice about their own career paths. Um, and then if you stick around till the end of this presentation, uh, which I kind of rush through, I have a very special announcement to share that I think many of you will be interested in uh, about a, an opportunity, a prize really that I'm releasing uh, where you can win up to $10,000. So let me go ahead and start my screen share. You can see my slides. Great. So um, why I'm going back to medical school. All right. So for those of you who may not know, we, uh, my co-founder Ryan and I met as anatomy partners at Johns Hopkins a decade ago, uh, just li slightly actually over a decade ago. Um, and we started building what eventually would become osmosis. Um, and so you can see there's this Hopkins Medicine article about us working on this learning tool. And if you go to our YouTube channel, which is one of our most popular places people find us, probably where you're watching this right now, um, you know, the first headline trailer is actually the founder story. I'm going to play, it's only two minutes. So I'm going to play the two minutes just so you get a level set of what the story is. And then we'll go into kind of how it's been. Osmosis is a powerful health learning platform that aims to build a more caring world and is used by millions of learners globally. Our story began with Shiv and Ryan, two medical students from Johns Hopkins University who started a crowdsourced question bank. These budding student doctors knew that there had to be a better way to learn medicine more effectively and efficiently. They took leave from medical school to develop a learning platform to help medical students. It turned out that future nurses, PAs, veterinarians, dentists, pharmacists, and so many others, including caregivers and people with health conditions, were also looking for better ways to learn. Medical topics can be complex and difficult to understand. Osmosis' videos improve understanding of difficult concepts by breaking them down into short, digestible videos, helping students learn faster and save time studying. In addition to videos, Osmosis helps learners retain important information longer with thousands of assessment items and evidence-based learning techniques, so the information sticks through classes and board exams. At Osmosis, we believe learning should be fun. Our visual style not only helps communicate difficult concepts by grounding them with visual memory anchors, but it's full of fun characters and engaging animations that foster the joy of learning. Osmosis isn't just about preparing students for that important board exam or acing a course, although that's an awesome side effect. We wanna build a community of caring individuals who value lifelong learning. A big part of that is helping clinicians and caregivers remain passionate about what they do equip them with the important tools they need to be effective in their work and build core competencies that enhance their connections with the people they interact. Want to join us in making an impact on health education? Contact us to see how we can partner to build a more caring world. Great. And so as far as the Osmos partnership, uh, which the video ended, that's going to come back uh, in a couple of slides. So just pay attention to that. So as the video shared, Ryan and I left medical school at Johns Hopkins because we wanted to make medical school more efficient and engaging. And if you've been with us for a while, you know that we've published a number of articles, including this uh, paper in Annals of Internal Medicine called What Can Medical Education Learn from Facebook and Netflix? And that was from 2014. And the whole concept was, how do we make a learning platform that's as fun to use as what you're used to when you use um, any of these other channels like YouTube, for example? Uh, and then how do we leverage big data to personalize recommendations so we're sending you the right content at the right time, where, for example, at New York University, which is one of our major partners, uh, we know that students in the third year clerkships are learning about cystic fibrosis today. So tomorrow they're getting a push notification with a video or a question about cystic fibrosis from osmosis. 
We did a bunch of other things. Um, I gave a TEDx talk a couple of years ago called Could You Get an MD Online? And uh, fortunately, a lot of the concepts that we sort of were pioneering at the time for medical school, like flipped classroom, active learning, spaced repetition, are now kind of the standard. Um, you know, it's really cool to go back to Hopkins. Most of the students here are using tools like Osmosis uh, and others to, to basically make medical school more efficient and engaging. One other thing, though, that I'm really proud of with Osmosis is that we aren't just focused on the test, as the video said. Of course, that's really important. Of course, you need to focus on it to, to get to the next stage, stage whatever, whether that's uh, your nursing degree or residency or whatever it may be. I'm actually focused on it, too. I have to take the steps uh, now that I'm back in med school. But we're also more holistic than that. We want to, you know, make you help help you become a lifelong learner. Uh, we have a whole bunch of content, as you know, about paying for medical school, how to tackle your first semester, how to survive and thrive and put your health first and foremost, uh, which is certainly something uh, I want all of you to remember. I'm actually recording this right after a long gym workout today. So after we left medical school, I actually did my MBA at uh, Harvard Business School from 2014 to 2016, and then went full-time on osmosis starting in 2016. So it was about five years of just full-time working on osmosis. And again, super proud about the growth and the fact that we are able to reach people like you all over the world. Uh, we now have over 3.2 million registered learners. And if you go to osmosis.org forward slash world, it's one of my favorite pages. You can click on any one of these red dots and meet some of our learners uh, all over from Argentina to Rwanda to Australia, et cetera. The 3.2 million figure is pretty cool for us because this is a uh, picture of the lecture hall at Johns Hopkins that we spent a lot of countless hours in our first and second year of medical school. And it was designed for about 120 students in the class. So 120 students is kind of who we were building Osmosis for when we first got started. And 3.2 million uh, learners, uh, which is who we, how, how many people we reach now, could fill 27,000 of these lecture halls at Hopkins. So I really get really grateful for the scale that we've been able to achieve. And then at the end of 2021, uh, as many of you know, we joined Elsevier, uh, which was super big uh, milestone for us, a very successful exit or acquisition uh, for those of you who are familiar with the startup vernacular. And I'm going to go through some of the, the highlights of the last year and a half since we joined Elsevier, but it's sort of a match made in heaven because, as you know, Elsevier is the publisher of Grey's Anatomy and Netters. Um, they have uh, Shadow Health and Complete Anatomy and all these other industry-leading tools and Osmosis was the latest one to join them, and it's become an amazing part of our story. So um, this actually all reminds me of uh, this one of my favorite quotes from Bill Gates, uh, a quote I share with many people who ask me for advice about leaving med school or nursing school to build something. It's that most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And that's certainly the case with Ryan and me. We had no idea when we were leaving medical school that it would take 10 years to reach this state. But we also didn't know we'd even reach this state um, and, and reach as many people as we've been very privileged and grateful to, to do. So some of the highlights over the last year and a half that I wanted to share with you is that you know, just in that time, we've gotten over 62 million more views on YouTube alone with over 560,000 subscribers. Uh, Elsevier uh, has helped us release osmosis in Spanish, uh, localized osmosis for Australia, uh, especially for nursing uh, professionals and students down there. Um, and then we've also partnered with uh, dozens more institutions, including our first school in India, uh, DJ, DY Patil Medical College, our first school in China with the Nanchang University, um, and then a bunch more others uh, across North America and, uh, and around the world, really. Um, one of my favorite things to do is actually go to schools, go to your schools and visit you. So over the past several months, I've had the opportunity to travel to you know, Israel, where five of the six medical schools in Israel learn by osmosis and teach by osmosis. Uh, I was just in Rwanda a couple of weeks ago visiting our partners at the University of Global Health Equity, wonderful campus in Butaro, and uh, they're part of the Partners in Health uh, group. We've been providing them access to osmosis for over five years. I visited several medical schools in Portugal, uh, including our partners at Catolica University. And then this last picture down here is at Charles University in, in Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, and it's been a total privilege of mine to be able to go meet faculty, meet administrators, meet students who learn and teach by osmosis. Uh, and so if you know you want me to come visit your school, I'm more than happy to, to work on that, especially after I finish med school. Um, another big highlight, Elsevier really supported us when we came to them with this idea 
of building upon the work osmosis has been doing for years to do rare disease education because Elsevier has been working in rare disease um, research and, and other aspects of drug discovery for many, many years. And so we just sort of, sort of combined forces and connected the dots and launched this uh, really great initiative called the Year of the Zebra, which many of you have seen. And if you listen to the podcast, you know we've had a lot of people from the rare disease community or the zebra community here. So uh, a big highlight was the CEO of YouTube, Neil Mohan, announced this uh, uh, Year of the Zebra uh, on Rare Disease Awareness Day at the end of February this year. We've had several amazing patients and parents and others on the podcast talking about this. And then February of this year, I led a small team uh, of eight people, including two people with rare diseases, uh, on a summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. You can see Bora Zebra onesie for that. So that's definitely been a highlight since joining Elsevier. But, you know, ever since I was started Osmosis, um, I had always been itching to get back to medical school. It was never the plan to take as much time off as I did um, for osmosis, going back to that Bill Gates quote. And this was actually an article from when we first left medical school to start osmosis um, in the Philadelphia Business Journal, which said, osmosis expects to raise funding early next year, which means Gaglani and Haynes will have to answer questions about whether they'll return to medical school. Gaglani said venture capitalists who would invest in the company don't want to hear we're going back to med school, but our parents don't want to hear we're not going back to med school. So I found a way to, to kind of bridge the gap where we made our VCs proud with the uh, the growth and acquisition of osmosis. And I'm also hopefully making my parents a bit proud, and I know many of you can relate to that, by actually going back to med school, so kind of treading that needle. But it was a really tough decision because at this point, I'm, you know, I started at the Hopkins Med School class of 2015, and now I'm in the class of 2025. So I'm sort of the older guy, definitely not the oldest person in med school at Hopkins or even in med school in general, but, um, but you know, it's been 10 years. And so there are a lot of fear around coming back. But, so I wanted to kind of walk through some of the reasons I've decided personally to go back um, with the hopes of finishing. The first and most important reason is that helping patients directly is a privilege that provides deep purpose. One of the favorite quotes in medicine that I always used to quote when I was at a full-time medical student was from one of the founders of Johns Hopkins Medicine, William Osler, who said, he who studies medicine without books sails an uncharted sea, but he who studies medicine without patients does not go to sea at all. And, you know, I spent from the age of five to the age of 20 working to this goal of getting into med school to be able to help patients directly. Um, and then osmosis was kind of the side project that became the main project. Um, but I still kind of yearned for the ocean or the sea in this analogy and to actually be able to interact one one with patients and help them on a very personal level. Uh, another quote for you from Confucius is a healthy man wants a thousand things, a sick man only wants one. This is one of the reasons I think it's so gratifying to work directly with patients because the purpose they have, the, the vulnerability they share with you and the way you're able to help them when they want that one big thing, which is to restore their health, Again, it's such a privilege. I think we're all, you know, kind of can take for granted. And even the past several months of being back in Baltimore and seeing patients, including one gentleman who uh, had just rebounded on a fentanyl addiction, it was just immensely gratifying to be able to, you know, enter his world um, and just kind of see what we can do to help him, uh, even as a student. Um, and then when I'm reflecting on some of the things that made me most proud at osmosis, of course, it's being able to help students achieve their dreams and become clinicians, um, among other things. But some of the things I was most particularly proud of and excited about were the, the initiatives like the Year of the Zebra that directly reach patients and family members. So we have an entire video that you should check out, Patients and Family Members Learn by Osmosis. Here's a quote on our video on premature ovarian failure. Uh, from Chelsea, who said, as someone who was diagnosed with POF at the age of 14, it's nice to finally know what's going on because I didn't understand a single thing my doctor said, except for the fact I wasn't able to have children. Thank you so much for this. I'm glad I have a better understanding of it. We've made thousands of videos on osmosis, and we've gotten thousands of comments just like this one from patients and family members who've used the same videos you watched to better understand their conditions and become engaged in their own health. And this has been one of the most exciting things we've done uh, over the past several years at Osmosis. We also have had a lot of patients and family members on our podcast, uh, including Suzanne Peake, who started this uh, Rare Disease Foundation, who said, be that Sherlock Holmes, that person who tries to find out the reason why someone isn't feeling well. And again, some of these guests I've had on the podcast, more so even than the doctors or nurses or, or deans of schools, have been the most gratifying conversations because 
you know, they're the ones who actually are the reason we're even here. The reason you're listening to this, the reason you're subscribed to the Osmosis channel, uh, et cetera. Um, the other second reason, apart from patients, is that learning medicine has never been more engaging and efficient. So obviously, I left med school a decade ago because it was not that efficient. Um, you know, lectures were boring, 60 minutes, passive, not evidence-based education. Um, but fortunately, in that intervening time, not only has osmosis grown, but there are a lot of other companies that sort of do, um, <clears throat> you know, similar evidence-based practices. And we're all kind of friends. I've had many of them on the podcast. And I'm glad we all created this category to make medicine more efficient and engaging. And so on my own podcast episode uh, released recently, I said one of the most exciting things about going back to med school is I'm relying on osmosis as my primary resource. I'm literally betting my medical degree on it. So uh, osmosis is something I'm using daily again, like I used to do when I was in medical school. And I'm obviously submitting a lot of content and product feedback along the way. Um, but then I also now, as part of the Elsevier family, have access to the other industry-leading uh, tools and platforms, including uh, 3D Anatomy, um, or Complete Anatomy from 3D4 Medical, uh, which is an incredible platform. I'm using it for both anatomy review and my surgery clerkship in the coming months. And then Clinical Key Student, which has thousands of assessment items that I'm using for step prep, as well as um, access to the industry-leading books, right? So for various clerkship books like Nelson's Pediatrics and obviously Gray's and Netters and those other brands. Uh, one of the fun things about me going back to med school, actually, is that our friends at Complete Anatomy uh, in the Ireland office uh, <laughs> created a, a virtual 3D avatar for me. And I wore this shirt on purpose so you can see uh, if we look alike uh, with this avatar. So I can actually learn anatomy with 3D Complete Anatomy using my own avatar eventually. So it's pretty cool. A third reason I'm going back is that, uh, as you know, we have this podcast, Raise the Line. And I've had hundreds of guests on the podcast, including uh, physician executives and uh, nurse leaders and others um, who've joined us. And uh, one of the ones who's most, the most famous one probably is Mark Cuban. And I, on, this, on this episode I had with Mark Cuban, um, one of the points he made really stuck with me. And it was a point other guests have made, which is that if you really want to innovate and improve the healthcare system, you've got to have direct experience working in the healthcare system or being a patient of the healthcare system. Indeed, that's where the idea for osmosis came. It definitely would not have been as successful as it is had I not put myself, had been my own customer and put myself in the customer's shoes. Similarly, if I want to build new software, new things for doctors or nurses uh, within Elsevier, outside of Elsevier, being someone who's actually gone on the wards and rotated through, used an electronic health record, counseled patients, it gives you a lot more insight and ideas that you can use to, to innovate and to raise the line or strengthen our healthcare system. Um, for years, I've had this philanthropic and investment arm of my family called Ganglia Ventures. Um, I won't spend too much time on it, but Ganglia is an anagram of my last name, Gaglani. And so it's all about connections. How do you connect people to each other? How do you connect ideas to each other? And how do you connect people to ideas? And so one of the reasons I chose to go back to Hopkins is that it has some of the most amazing researchers, clinicians, uh, fellow students I've met. Um, and I have tons of ideas within osmosis, within Elsevier, and even outside these organizations related to artificial intelligence, brain computer interfaces, uh, psychedelic assisted therapy, uh, the aging and ageless generation, physical therapy, dentistry, wellness, climate change, and other fields that can contribute to society. So two, two Hopkins leader, leading uh, centers are the Center for Psychedelic and Consciousness Research, um, which has a lot of promising uh, FDA-approved clinical trials related to substance abuse disorders, eating disorders, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and many other uh, issues, as well as the Johns Hopkins uh, Artificial Intelligence Foundry, which takes some of the best clinicians and researchers, engineers across Hopkins and puts them all in one place um, so that we can innovate in artificial intelligence. So super excited about being a student again and absorbing all this, but also having fresh eyes for um, both the entrepreneurial and the clinical journey ahead. Um, another reason I'm going back to med school is that doing hard things can be incredibly fulfilling. And so I'm a big fan of pushing myself and uh, growing in that process. Uh, most of the things I've done recently that fit that vein are physical. So obviously you mentioned climbing Kilimanjaro for rare disease awareness and the year of the zebra. Uh, but even last October, I did my second Ironman in Portugal along with my colleague Pauline, um, 
on our Diffusion Studios team, who's one of our great illustrators on our team. And, you know, it's a really hard thing to do, um, but it's that's what makes it meaningful. The fact that it's hard, it's kind of what Viktor Frankl wrote about logotherapy, you know, meaning through suffering or meaning through difficulty. Um, and so as I'm going through med school, I'm like, I just realized that the hard thing is going back from, from being like the leader of an organization, um, top of the totem pole within osmosis, um, you know, fairly autonomous, having my own schedule, traveling when I want, et cetera, to now being a student again and having to study all the time, having to do scut work, um, you know, feeling, feeling a bit like at the bottom of the totem pole. Certainly I'm afraid of that. Um, and it's definitely something I think about, but I, that's exactly why I want to do it. Uh, so there's two emotions, the two Fs, I call them, that I'm looking for as I go through medical school, because on the other side of those two Fs are where the kind of the honey is, where the growth is. So on the other side of fear is, is growth. So uh, an example I gave on the podcast was as I was, you know, preparing to do an IV um, on, a, on a mannequin, you know, I feel pretty incompetent because I haven't done one in a long time. And it's also, it's a hard thing to do, especially if you get a patient who has uh, hard veins uh, to find. And so that fear, though, is how you grow. That's how you learn. Um, and so whenever I find that I'm fearful of something, whether it's, you know, traveling somewhere or learning something or doing a procedure, I want to lean into that fear and grow. And I hope, hope many of you feel the same way or have experienced that. The second is frustration. So I know it's going to be super frustrating. I've, I have no doubts because um, I know a lot of people who finished and who are residents and are practicing. And um, they talk all the time about how frustrating clinical medicine is. And so, you know, I remember being a student in, in Hopkins the first time and being super frustrated with the, the passive lectures and the, the blackboard and all these learning tools we were using that weren't really designed for, for learning. There were more admin tools. And that frustration was the birth of the opportunity that became osmosis. And so I'm really looking for um, that those two kind of Fs I've said and taking notes of whenever I feel that, because if I can push through past the fear and past the, past the frustration, it can lead to growth and opportunity. And this is also a concept that's covered extensively in this great book by one of my mentors and osmosis is kind of, you know, one of the main drivers of osmosis is growth, uh, a really famous investor named Alan Patrikoff, who was early on Apple and Amazon and kind of picked osmosis as, as one of the core investments he made over the last several years too. He has a great book called No Red Lights, which kind of has this mentality too, which is try growing, try pursuing opportunities by turning these negative emotions into positive ones. And then finally, um, it's really a personal dream. As I mentioned in my personal statement, uh, I wanted to be a doctor since I was about five. I was exposed to it. My dad's a retired physician practicing. He practiced in South Africa, but trained in India. My mom is a physical therapist. My sister is a dentist and my brother-in-law is a dentist. So between my family, I'm sort of the black sheep who, who never finished my clinical degree. And so it really is not just my own personal dream. It's sort of like a family dream. Um, and that's not the main reason to do it at all, but it's an important one. I want to be clear that I'm. Uh, this, is, this is an important reason to list. So all these positive reasons being said, I do want to caveat this by, by just being upfront because so much of the advice I give to people, and I'll, I'll, I'll end this particular section with advice for you too, is that careers zigzag and hopefully our lives are very long. So while I fully intend this time to go back and finish medical school, I acknowledge the fact that a decade ago, I only made it through two years before stopping and starting osmosis. And hopefully you're as happy as I am that I did that because um, some really good stuff came out of that frustration and, and that gap year, which became a gap 10 years. And so I know that whether it's three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, it's very possible that lightning will strike again. And some of these ideas, whether it's how to improve osmosis and Elsevier for you all, um, other um, types of ideas and in artificial intelligence, psychedelics, or other spaces could really be compelling enough that I take another pause or leave. And, you know, I want to be open about that and, and very clear because, you know, it's very hard to, it, it's just not a way to live life, I think, to feel like you're fixed, that you're trapped in a specific path. Um, you don't want to be flippantly moving between paths, but you want to deliberately think about the path you're on and assess whether it's the right use of your time and your skill set. So just being upfront that hopefully I'll finish and I only have about a year and a half left, 
but it's it's entirely possible that uh, that new stuff will will come across uh, our way. So I'm often asked to kind of summarize advice based on building osmosis, based on being a med student, coming back to med school. And so I just want to leave you with a couple of pieces of advice right here. The first and most important one is just taking care of your own health and well-being. We're all hearing about clinicians who are burning out, students who are burning out, unfortunately, students who, who take their own lives, et cetera. You know, nothing is worth that. So make sure that you're taking care of your health and well-being, having fun in the process, and looking out for your classmates and those around you. Because, you know, there's so much more life than just you being a student or uh, what your career is. Second is don't be afraid to take risks and explore your interest. There is no one-size-fits-all roadmap. This is definitely something that comes from the kind of the stepwise approach that medicine is. You first do, you know, high school and college, pre-med and, and medicine, undergraduate and graduate programs like residency and then fellowship. And so it's just, you keep going and going. Um, but I've met so many people who've taken a detour, zigzag here and there. I met a Buddhist monk who became a doctor, Lisa Sanders, who writes the diagnosis column and was the chief medical consultant for the TV show House MD was on the podcast and she started med school at 37 after a full career as a as a television journalist. So be okay with taking a zigzag if necessary and feel free to reach out to me if if that's a, of interest. A third is reading widely and often, right? So a lot of advice is contextual, like you can always find advice uh different competing advice for the same issue. But I think reading is one of those uh, pure pieces of advice that never you never go wrong. And that's because, you know, while we have 8 billion people living today, there have been over 100 billion people who've lived in humanity's history. Many of the smartest and greatest thinkers of our time have um, written books about challenges, whether it's relationship challenges, you know, what's the meaning of life challenges, career challenges, whatever it may be. And if you can find the right books and go down those rabbit holes, you basically add years of wisdom to your to your life without adding years of age to your life. So definitely find the time to read, even though we're so busy with medical school, see if while you're working out or commuting, you can still kind of squeeze in some books that, that appeal. Fourth is cultivating a bias towards action. I think we spend a lot of time, like even if you're listening to this video, um, just consuming content. I think taking the next step and actually acting on that content, changing something you're doing, or in this case, you know, you've spent a lot of time listening to me here, Go ahead and add me on LinkedIn. Send me an email at shivalasmosis.org. And um, that sort of bias towards action, 10% more effort, 100% more caring is what I call it, can really serve you well in, in all aspects of what you do. And then the fifth, relatedly, is building strong relationships with your colleagues, mentors, and patients, as well as paying it forward by pulling up those behind you. So I love mentorship. I love being mentored. I'm grateful to all the people like Alan and, and countless others who've um, help help me achieve what I have so far. Um, but I also love connecting with mentees. So that's why I'm encouraging you to reach out to me and see if I can be helpful. Uh, just today while I was at the gym, Hopkins was having its second look weekend. And I met some students who were uh, between Hopkins and some other med schools. And I spent 30 minutes just talking to them about pros and cons. So I hope you do the same, you know, maybe for that pre-med or pre-nursing student, uh, even a younger student, someone else who's, you know, who can learn from you, take the time to do that. You'll never regret it. Okay, so that's what happened with osmosis, what's happened since the acquisition by Elsevier, and the reasons I'm going back to med school, or I've come back to med school. Now, you stayed this long. I wanted to reward you with a sneak peek at an upcoming opportunity that I'm super excited about. So one of the things I, uh, my family and I did, my sister and I did right after... Um, we joined forces with Elsevier, is through our office, the Gangly Adventures office, uh, we launched a scholarship for high school students in our home county in Florida of Brevard County. And we named one of the scholarships after the high school, West Shore, the teachers and staff scholarship, and the other after our parents, Dr. Mukesh and Vinita Gaglani, who are the reason we're here today, the reason I'm here. Um, literally, obviously, I'm their, their son, and Anushka is their daughter. But also figuratively in terms of the sacrifices they and their parents made to get us here. My grandparents were refugees during the partition in India uh, in Pakistan in 1947. So they've had to flee from Pakistan to India and they grew up very poor. And my parents through education, becoming a doctor and a physical therapist, moved my sister and me from India to Africa and then Africa to the US 
where there's a ton of opportunity to not only go to places like Hopkins Med and Harvard Business School, but also to create companies like Osmosis. So super grateful to all of them. And so we launched the scholarship to reward them. And the basically the application uh, for the scholarship was all the students had to write letters of appreciation to their par parents or parental figures, as well as their teachers. And we got some amazing um, letters of appreciation that basically spread joy, which as you know, is one of the core values at Osmosis. Um, and so we're announcing those winners this week and it's uh, two, two $5,000 prizes. So in the same spirit, uh, decided, you know, why, why stick just to high school students? Why not open it up to anybody? Uh, obviously, medical, nursing, and other health professional students are uh, an obvious one, but also anyone really who's learned by osmosis or wants to learn by osmosis. We have high school students who do that. We have um, practicing clinicians who use osmosis. We have patients, we have family members, we have people who worked at osmosis who use osmosis. So I'm really committed, you know, as I mentioned, I'm betting my medical career to osmosis. It's a third of my life has been dedicated to building osmosis. And so the prize I'm really excited to announce is the Osmosis Founder Diffusion and Innovation Prize. So I'm personally donating money to this prize where we'll have two $5,000 awards, the Diffusion Award and the Innovation Award. And so the Diffusion Award is to, the purpose of it is to help as many people schools, health systems, companies, partners, students, patients, and others also benefit from osmosis, right? So our vision is to create a more caring world. And when they use osmosis, not only do they learn how to provide care logistically, how do you place an IV? What are the side effects of these drugs? You know, how do you treat heart failure? These are some logistics of care, but then also sort of what's the, you know, um, what is spreading joy? What is, you know, how do you pay attention to a patient and, you know, break bad news to them, kind of the so-called soft skills that we spend a lot of time cultivating and thinking. How do you build strong relationships? I will training on how to build relationships. So we want to bring the whole osmosis ethos to as many people as possible, um, including things like you may have seen our referral system, you know, where you can give two weeks, get two weeks. So um, basically the application will go live uh, very soon. I'll have another video specifically about this prize, but just as a sneak peek, and you can get started on this right now, the diffusion prize is going to go to the person listening to this or who applies uh, or people. It could be split among multiple people too, um, who do the best job of helping osmosis diffuse or spread uh, to different people in a network. So that includes maybe something as simple as providing a, uh, a deal or a link or you know, sending your referral code out to a bunch of people on WhatsApp um, to something more kind of intriguing to us. Like obviously do that if you can. But the more intriguing thing is um, introducing us to your school. Over 200 schools learn by osmosis uh, around the world. It could be one of yours. Uh, it could be your school. Um, also, dozens of companies, maybe over 100 companies, have partnered with us to create content. So uh, here are several opportunities. The first is introducing us to partners. You know, maybe your uncle or aunt run a medical device company or... Um, you know, you are in the student curriculum committee for your school. So we've partnered with, as I said, over a hundred organizations to create content like osmosis content or license our content. And so you can see some of the groups we've done that with. So the head of YouTube health, Dr. Garth Graham said, the team at osmosis are experts at creating videos that make it fun to learn about even complex topics. Uh, their approach to health education is truly making a difference. These are some examples. We partner with the National Organization for Rare Disorders, the CDC Foundation, the uh, Arthur Degoni School of Dentistry, Thrive Global. We had Ariane Huffington on the podcast. This is her company. Uh, and then a bunch of other ones, 23andMe, the primary school, Kaiser Permanente. So if you know people who work at these organizations that may benefit from working with Osmosis to create more content or licensing content, please introduce them. You can just simply email them and cc me at shivatosmosis.org and I'm happy to talk. And that's 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 part of the Diffusion Prize. A second is that we also have over 250 hours of continuing education credit, and as mentioned, over 200 schools uh, like Penn and uh, Louisiana State University and Georgetown and Imperial College London that have gotten osmosis for their students and faculty. And, you know, this may be one of your schools, um, this may be one of your alumni schools, um, but regardless, feel free to make an introduction to the, your librarian or your admin um, or get a group of students together to advocate for this. And that's certainly something we want to do to help spread osmosis. The third is, as you know, it's the year of the zebra, and we're sending out a weekly 
year of the zebra email, which hopefully you're on, osmosis.org forward slash zebra. And so if you know groups that are interested in reaching our audience and sponsoring and adopting a zebra condition, in this case, for example, face syndrome, which the medical education company MedIQ uh, adopted, um, just again, shiv at osmosis.org, send them an email uh, and introduce us. And we're happy to, to work with them. And a fourth is to actually adopt a school or hospital. So Osmosis has given tons of free access, complimentary access to students all around the world. For example, uh, thousands of Ukrainian students since last year, since the war um, uh, came to their doorsteps. Uh, I was just in Rwanda, as mentioned, where we've been providing free access for a while. And then during the Syrian civil war, and even today, we give thousands of uh, Syrian students free access to Osmosis. And many of them actually translate our content into Arabic. So we're happy to do this. And if you or your school, your partner organizations are interested, they can also adopt a school or a hospital. Then the last kind of quick thing is the Founder Innovation Prize. So I've written articles like why medical schools are pumping out entrepreneurs, the memory hack that got me through med school and inspired a startup for art, uh, outlets like Entrepreneur and Fast Company. CNN wrote a profile on us when we ditched med school to start Osmosis. Um, and the whole point of this prize is to um, foster innovation to improve healthcare education, specifically how we train current and future clinicians, as well as engage with and empower patients. So I know some of you out there are already working on startups or other ideas, projects, initiatives that are super innovative. I personally, like many of you probably, are very stoked about ChatGPT, AI in general, and a lot of these innovations. I even asked it to list out several innovative and specific ideas uh, to improve health education. You can see some of them here if you pause. So I'm very excited about how you're using these tools in Osmosis, uh, how you want us to use them to make your learning experience better, uh, what other ideas you have. And as a, someone who invests in companies, advises them, um, you know, obviously has connections to Osmosis and Elsevier and other VCs, uh, I'd love for you to connect. So that's what the point of the second prize is, the innovation prize. So anyways, we have a lot of other opportunities I'll be announcing this very soon, uh, but I just wanted to take time to thank you for listening to this presentation, more importantly, for, for basically putting your trust in your time in osmosis. It means a lot to me and the entire osmosis team that you're betting your medical education on it too. And we're just in a privileged spot to be able to give back through these prizes uh, and hopefully through some advice and mentorship as we've done for many students along the way and other learners. So thank you again, and I hope to hear from many of you. Shiv at osmosis.org. Take care, right?